Are you ready, little girl? Hmm? Are you ready? Hey guys, welcome to the shop. This week I've got what I think is a neat little project, something that I, probably about anybody could do, but we're gonna go about it in maybe a little different way, way that a lot of you may not have considered. So let me show you on the workbench what I've got, and we'll get started making something cool. So what I've got on my workbench is the old broken drive axle out of my Chevrolet pickup, twisted right in two. Good quality steel, but most people don't try to make anything out of these because they're really hard. Now what I'm gonna make, I'm gonna show you how I would go about using this good quality steel. Not everybody has access to a steel shop or the money to go buy a good quality piece of material to turn into something that they want, but I'll guarantee that these are accessible to about anybody, no matter where you're at on the planet. In fact, they're yard art here in Kentucky. So let's go about making this into a useful tool for the shop. Let me, let me show you what I'm gonna make. So what I'm gonna be making is a drive arbor for my 5 8 diameter board slitting saws. This one happens to be 16 thousandths of an inch. I've got them down to six thousandths of an inch. Thin, smaller, handy, and I would use them if I had something to drive them. Now I've got a driver for the one inch diameter board slitting saws, but this one was in a toolbox that I bought years ago. It was obviously somebody that made it, made it in a real rush, and it aggravates me every time I use it because it got run out. It's just, it's just nothing special. So let's make one that we are proud to put in our toolbox and that when I'm long gone, whoever ends up with it, they'll hold on to it too because it'll be of good quality. So before we can turn this into anything useful, I first really would like to get an idea of how hard it is in its heat treated state. And to do that, I'm gonna use this set of Japanese hardness files. This is a good way for anybody on a budget to figure out or get a relatively close idea on the hardness of steels. These go from 40 Rockwell C all the way up to almost glass hard 65 Rockwell C. And what we'll do is we'll take these files and if it bites good, or relatively good, then we know that the file is harder than the material that it's cutting. If it just skates on the surface, we know that the surface that we're testing is harder than the file. So let's start off with 40, see, see what it does. Okay, 40 just kind of skates on there, and I don't want to burn up a bunch of time going through all of these, so let's skip all the way up to 50, because I would say that this is harder than that. Hmm. Hooking a little more, but still, axle's harder than 50 Rockwell C. Let's skip 55 and go straight to 60. Now that is kind of biting. Okay, let's try the 65. It's probably not going to be harder than that. No. About anywhere from 60 to 65 Rockwell C. So this is hard, almost high speed steel hard, at least on the outside anyway. So because of this axle's hardness, we have to cut it in its hardened state with an abrasive wheel. If you was to stick this in your bandsaw, it just smoke the blade immediately. So we need to get us off a chunk, soften it up. That way we can use it just like any other steel that we would get that was in an annealed state. So to make this thing soft, I'm gonna heat this up with an oxygen and acetylene torch and a rosebud. Uh, you could simply put this in the ashes of a wood, or in the coals of a wood stove or whatever, a pallet fire, whatever you want. But just needs to get good and red hot and then let cool on its own.
So now that our parts had time to cool completely on its own, let's do a quick hardness test. Um, let's start off at 40, just to make sure that it's soft before we go over there. Uh, 40 partially bites, but somewhat skates. Let's not waste a bunch of time. Go to 50. Yeah, 50 bites. So it's about 50. It's definitely hard, or definitely hard, but it's much softer than what it was before. Now we got to get over a little bit of talk before we stick this in the lathe and start making it. I want to emphasize on what my order of operations is going to be. So I'm going to put this in the three jaw. I'm going to turn me down a, a section here turn off these splines, turn down a section, I'm going to clamp this in the three jaw chuck, and then I'm going to do all of my work in one operation. That way I don't, uh, or in one go, that way I don't take this in and out of the chuck, flipping it and causing a bunch of inaccuracies that are in my chuck. If I clamp this one time and I do all of my work, all of my features on this shaft will be concentric with each other. So we want to avoid inaccuracies. If, like this one, probably has been probably was done in a couple operations. It's got quite a bit of run out in it, and what that causes is them to cut primarily on just one side. You may get six teeth on this entire saw blade that do the cutting depending on your feed rate, and uh, you know, that's no good. And we're not gonna key it e either. We're gonna just rely on the friction between the cap, a good fit, and the shank, and that should be plenty enough to drive these smaller saws. At least that's my, my thought. So enough talk. Let's go over the lathe, get started burning this into something useful. So I can already tell you, it's going to be kind of hard to get a better finish than what I've got right there, just by the way that the steel's acting. I'm going to have to experiment a little bit, speeds, feeds, different cutters, see what I can get. Hopefully something better than that.
I am not all that happy with that finish. It's kind of grainy, kind of rough. I was hoping to get a much better finish. Maybe something shiny. I don't know. I might play with some feed rates, RPMs, maybe some cutters, and just while I've got plenty of stock here, it's time to play to see where I can get my best finish. You know, if this is all I can get, then I'm fine with that, but I'd rather it be better. Uh, oh no. Let me, let me try a different cutter. I'll try this. Much sharper nosed. Oh, look at that already. That's what I'm after. amazing the difference a simple cutter change can make. But because I got a lot of material to remove, I don't want to do that with this cutter. I'll just get down close with the, the other, the other uh, um, carbide insert tool and we will uh, we'll go to this with finishing. So this insert that I was using first that I got the rough finish with is a DNMG uh, 432 and I, I'm wondering if it was maybe just dull so when I try that I, I flipped it to a new side actually I changed the whole insert because it was it was out of sides so we'll try this see if this gives us that same finish nope it's not the condition of the insert tip, because that's a brand new one. It must just be the profile. I'm not sure. I'm gonna try something else. Just wanna see. So I want the end of our shank here that holds the slitting saw or where the slitting saw is going to mount. I want that to be an inch in diameter. Then I want to transition down to a three quarter inch shank and have a quarter inch radius at that transition or eighth inch radius, sorry, uh, at that transition. So I'm just going to rough this down to size, all of this, get it really close. We're starting to get there on the end. And then uh, we'll come back in with the VNMG insert that gave us the mirror-like finish and hopefully just skim this out to size and have a nice looking tool.
So the shank's done, the head's done, the shoulder that, or the end that our uh, saw slides up on is done, well, almost done. The very important step here that I see a lot of people skip, and usually it ends with poor performance of the arbor like this, because the saws that we use, at least almost every one that I own, does not have an intentional shoulder. It's a sharp 90 degree corner right on the edge there. And if we don't remove the small radius that's left in that corner, this saw is gonna hit on that first. It's not gonna fit flush and tight up against the shoulder, giving us a lot of surface area to contact. And just throw that down inside of the belly of the beast here. It's not gonna tighten up down tight on that uh, shoulder. And it's probably gonna slip, just poor performance. I see that in a lot of tools that you know, I've seen just uh, people make over the years. So we want to make sure that this fits, and it does. Oh, there's not much of a radius there because it's such a, such a small uh, VNMG, really small radius on the end of that cutting tool. But I assure you that the radius on the end of that tool is what's left in that corner, and we want to delete that, but it pretty much only. We don't want to undercut this any because our saws that I'll be using on this arbor anyway are super thin. So I just want to, it may not even make hardly a chip. But I'm going to sharpen up a piece of high-speed steel, just angle this end a bit to where I can just come in there and go and delete that little radius. That's all. Got to do that. It's an important step. to do. Just angle that tip just a bit. That's it. Now I'm going to remove these sharp edges. So here's our plan for getting the threads in the end of this. I'm gonna remove the center because we're done with that, put in our drill chuck, pilot drill it. Then we're gonna to drill to size for the bolt that we're gonna be using, which in my case is gonna be a 5 16 18 cap screw with an 82 degree head. So that rule will require a number F drill, says our Starrett decimal equivalent charts. Starrett will send you these free if you go to their website, or at least they did up until yeah, a week or two ago because a buddy of mine just got some. They'll send you these free. They're super handy. I keep them on my drill press, keep them at the lathe. They're some sort of wax paper so they hold up really well. And anywhere you really need these numbers, super handy. Also send you a wall chart, I think, for, for free. Well worth getting. So let's uh, get this pilot drilled, drilled, then we'll run in with a starting tap and then a bottom tap to get our threads done all the way to the end because it's kind of a long screw. That's the deal. Let's get started.
so your saw vise is no different than your milling vise. If you're cutting round stuff, sometimes a couple V blocks, you know, especially if you're dealing with something like this that has two different size ends, we want to hold it nice and solid. You know, V blocks work really good. Plus, you can just loosen it up a bit, scoot it, you know, and hold it pretty good. At least better than we could, what we could hold it otherwise, and give us a, a relatively square cut. So I've got a little shop made, it's out of a carbide end mill, boring bar, and the holder here, I've got to bore the socket that's going to slip over the end, it's 124 thousandths is what it is, because the bore of our slitting saws that we're using basically right on 125, so we made that 124, that way we, you know, it just fits on really good. Not any measurable play, but, you know, doesn't interfere either. What we need to do is make sure that our cap bore depth is more than our standoff here so the cap always presses against the saw and doesn't uh, doesn't rest on the face of our arbor here so all I've done here is touch off boring bar touch off against the face of this locked my carriage lock now I'm going to feed in my compound 187 thousandths then I can just bang 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 just feed out to get uh, the bore size that I want, which will be 125, 126, as long as it slips over the end without interference. That's all that matters and doesn't have too much play in it and is at the depth that we want. So that's what I'm doing, is boring out this cap. Then we'll flip it over. We'll turn off all of the excess material on the end and then counter bore the bolt head end so that we can uh, seat our 82 degree countersunk Headed screw in there. So now it's time for me to countersink the end of this tap with this 82 degree countersink. And all I'm after is the head of this bolt to set just slightly below the surface. And all I'm gonna do is come in, take a cut to where it looks about right, do a test fit, pull it out, take a little deeper cut. That, that's all I'm after is just a recessed head.
Probably got it. And that's it. Just slightly below the surface. I think that looks better than flush. So there we go. It is complete. So it is time for a test run on this slitting saw arbor. Now this arbor being or having a right-handed screw in it, it's pretty much a clockwise rotation setup. No key, so if it tries to slip, I want it to try to tighten the bolt instead of the alternative. So that's my main concern. Is it going to slip? 28 thousandths of an inch is the, about the thickest saw that I have uh, in a 5 8 board that I plan to use with this. So if it doesn't slip with this, it, it's not going to slip at all or it shouldn't. Half inch deep cut in a piece of 5 8 round 4140. That's, that's the plan. So I'm going to come in, touch off, get on center, and then hand feed across nice and slow with a little bit of cutting oil. 60 RPM. Did I say that? I don't know on the spindle. Not that it matters. So if it doesn't slip with this, it should be good to go. So let's do our test run and, you know, see if it's going to work or not. So there's always some run out with these. I just don't want it to be excessive. Doesn't look to be excessive. deep little oil oh very little run out for any better now. So there we go, something that would have went to the trash otherwise, the steel anyway, 
turned into a useful tool for the shop that I would have used at least a couple times in the last three weeks had I had one. So something I wanted to make, figured I'd take you guys along with me. Not a super complicated project, but we did make it out of uh, scrap material. Maybe you learned something there. Other than that, we've got ourselves a 5 8 diameter slitting saw arbor that has basically no run out and that holds the saws nice and firm and works. Well, hello, little girl. Come on. Good jump. All right, guys, that is it this week. Simple little part. Filled an empty spot in my toolbox, a tool that I needed. Made it out of scrap. Turned out great. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, it is much appreciated. Core appreciates it as well. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Wave at them. Tell them bye. <laughs> see you guys.